Hey guys, and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrids, or technically a bonus round this time. Prompt number 9 of the Shark and Lizards have already finished, but there were just so many submissions that I couldn't fit them all into the previous three videos, so enjoy this bonus round. For those who missed it, prompt number 10 has been announced, and that is Monsters and Kaijus and your favourite animal. So, for prompt number 9, part 4, we've got another 50 entries. <laughs> You guys really go crazy. Our very first one is by Shunky, and that is of a Jowie and a Tiger Shark. It's funny, Jowies are reptiles and lizards. It never really occurred to me that someone would add a Jowie to this prompt, and you know what? It looks absolutely fantastic. Shunky, I just love the coloration. I love how you've intertwined the Jowie frills into all of the sails and fins of the Tiger Shark. The scales and the patterns are absolutely beautiful, and the whole thing just looks incredibly majestic and just really, really beautiful. And following Shunky is the Dragon's Hoons to Heat, with their nurse shark and savannah monitor lizard and for the description they have added she looks intelligent but i couldn't tell you whether or not she is sentient she has a very cryptic beauty i can't tell if she's a kind creature or a predator and maybe i don't really want to the mystery is only fun until it's answered unless it's scooby doo which would just be a boring episode i have to agree with that actually i am a big fan of leaving things down to interpretation and i do have to agree it is kind of tricky to tell like if this creature is um it, like, it looks like it's curiously looking into the camera or into the perspective of the viewer and that does give it like a very curious expression. So I agree in regards to the mystery of, you know, is it or isn't it? Is it a predator? Is it kind? I do like those kind of things and interpretation and saying that, I gotta say, I do like the expression. I especially like the technique on the stripes running down the back and how the colours are somewhat of a gradient but also a little bit sharp here and there, especially little circles within the stripes. And next up by Hazilla, we have the Quetzalcoatlus, Edestus, Crocodile Skink, Blacktip Shark, Field Shark and the second form of Shin Godzilla aka Kamatakan. <laughs> this looks incredible. God damn. I have to say, as much as I'm not personally a big fan of Kamatakan, I absolutely love the way Haz is entwined with the creepy neck gill fleshy things into the neck of this creature it just suits it so that like, it just looks really really cool also the wings the design of the wings how they have these individual segments if you will again just looks awesome the, the entire thing just looks badass it's a really amazing just combination of all these different creatures it looks absolutely formidable i really love all the definition of the musculature and especially the head and the beak just look incredible and next up we have Ghost and Nico with two of their characters. On the left is Theo, the blue-tailed skink and thresher shark hybrid. And on the right is Angelo, which is a Anola, leopard gecko and blue shark hybrid. I think this is a very cute submission. It's really cool to see the two characters interacting with each other and just how varied and different their appearances and markings are. It makes for a really cool contrast. And I especially think that the setting really fits the scene as well. And next up, we got a Spore Mega Build by Filey. And this one contains both the Lizark and also the Leobra from a previous prompt, which are now best friends going for a small walk on the surface. Though, because only the Lizark can actually walk, the Leobra is kind of just sitting and hanging on its head looking around. But thankfully, because they're both part reptile, they can survive above water. I absolutely love the face in the Lizark itself, and I think that the entire idea here is just very creative intertwining a previous submission into this like it's part of the big mega build really just adds so much more personality to the two creatures and seeing how they'd interact it's also cool to see them up and out of the water into this really lovely lush landscape and i have to admit it's the kind of thing i'd really would love to see animated and next up by fox Wyvern, we have the great white shark and ankylosaurus hybrid dude a shark and an ankylosaur that is a really formidable really cool sounding combination and i absolutely love how it looks here i really like its aerodynamic shape it looks like a creature that despite being very big in armor it looks like it could really swim quite quickly in the water or at least make some rather powerful dives and leaps and I also really like the construction of its face, how you can tell that the face is big and armoured, but it also just has its teeth kind of poking through, and especially a bit of a beak it looks like from the front, or at least some tough armour plating, and the texture on the legs as well just looks awesome. Next up we have an amalgamation of hybrids by Just Know. As I mentioned, a bunch of living and extinct sharks and some triatic lizards. I feel like the one thing I can really see here is hammerhead shark and I think axolotl, judging by the little pinky things on the neck. But either way though, it's a very interesting combination. The dark and murky landscape makes me imagine of some kind of abyssal deep sea creature and the pale colour scheme really does complement that quite nicely. In fact, looking at the pink appendages, the two little horns and the fourth that's eyes really makes me think of something like Anomalocaris or at least something from that era where we had like lots of very strange underwater creatures. I think it suits that perfectly. And next up we've got another one by Shunky, but this time for Pokemon Fusion. Next up we had the Mega Charachomp, which is a Mega Charizard X and Mega Garchomp. I gotta say, Shunky, the posing on this one just looks really badass. I love the way, just, just the way you're looking at it. It looks awesome. And also the big Charizard X wings in combination with the big Garchomp arms. It's just another really cool combination. The entire thing is just really badass. And I think like, you know, for a mega Pokemon, it looks perfect. I think it really nailed the theme here. 
not to mention a flurry effect on the tail and the mouth. It also just looks visually stunning. And next up by Rubina Dragon, we have the Draco Shark made in PS4 Dreams. Oh, I want that. <laughs> I really want PS4 Dreams. Just looking at this right here, it just looks awesome. And I'm imagining it properly animates. I don't know how exactly PS4 Dreams, but I just would love to imagine this, I don't know, swimming around or moving. It just looks really awesome. I love how it's just got very very smooth shapes like in comparison to Spore. It just looks a lot more organic, quite a bit more natural. I also love the design itself. I like all the osteoderms and spikes running down the back or on the base of the flippers. The shape of the face looks awesome and I really like just the great big frills coming out the side. And next up by Abyss Arachnus, we have the Hammerhead Vipertooth Shark Anole Hybrid. This looks very, very eerie. Another creature I can imagine being incredibly deep ocean very abyssal perhaps like a low quality camera kind of taking a shot here and just the way it's hammerhead's eyes are like kind of curving outwards in a way as opposed to being straight out it just makes it look so much more alien and it just looks really cool and again like very very creepy and eerie and next up we've got cherish with the frilled hammerhead cherish mentioned that they were aiming for a more semi-scientific illustration type to the style and i think they've absolutely nailed it i just love the two different angles the front one showcasing the face and the bottom one just showing the entire body mid-action and the little sketches of the serrated teeth and the eyes on the right hand corner the entire creature just looks absolutely awesome i love the frill and i also really like how the frill actually matches aesthetically compared to the big dorsal fin on the back and the fins around the tail it really matches and looks very consistent and the front arms as well just look fantastic and creepy and the entire thing comes together looking very believable and a very strong unique concept and next up we got a sport creation by Vinesh of the Willisaur and Tiger Shark he mentioned how he wasn't really sure how to make this more complex looking because you know spore is simple and of course so is a willow shark but to be honest I think he struck a really nice balance here and I especially like the change of colour palette and the nice orange and red stripes just really kind of bringing out a bit more not to mention the face I think the face is absolutely perfect and as the grasper on the tail. And now I want to see more willow saws. <laughs> Following by Nash, we have Zick Dragon with their Pinocchio, Lizard, and Kachark. Done once again in their amazing old school Disney style. I really love the exaggerated features on this, just the big, tired looking eye, the shriveled up mouth, the very long Pinocchio nose, and the tall neck. The whole thing just comes together very nicely. I really like the colour palette, and I especially like how the green transitions into this bit of a murky, brownish purple colour scheme. And also the colour of the spots as well suit it nicely. And once again, like I've said it before and I'll say it again, Zick does an amazing job with this old school Disney feel and it just looks absolutely perfect in every way. Next up by Atomic Blast, we have the Helicorpion and an Alligator. I gotta say, imagine a Helicorpion jaw or those big sawtooth teeth in conjunction with the crocodile skull. That has got to have some amazing bite force, or at least some amazing shredding capabilities. That is a very fearsome sounding combination, and I think that Atomic Blast did a great job of illustrating it here. The entire creature looks very battle-worn as well, which I can imagine. It just gives me like the vibe of a very ancient apex predator, and I think it looks badass. And next up by Red Vamp Alucard, we've got the Carpet Chameleon and Great White Shark Spore Hybrid. I do quite like the colour palette, it's quite interesting seeing a white and green colour scheme. I imagine that being the result of the chameleon part of the hybrid, but I can also imagine it being this very eerily bright creature kind of lurking in the ocean, sort of like a phantom. But with the big piercing blue eyes, I can imagine it being, yeah, quite ghostly. And next up we've got Abyss Arachnus once again with the Goblin Creeper. I've been really enjoying their dark and gloomy illustrations and I think this one about tops it off. Mostly because all the shading, oh, which is really cool shading, more like lighting on the face. I just really like how the jaw in particular is etched out and just stands out in comparison to the nose. The eyes are just glowing and very eerie. And you can see just a lot of texture along the face, the arm fins and a bit of the body. And once again, you know, as I said before, the whole thing looks very eerie and wonderfully gloomy. And next up, we've got Zig Dragon once again with a Tyrannosaurus Rex Megalodon hybrid, chasing a quite a familiar looking hybrid because he entered her territory. <laughs> again, Zig has just nailed it with the old school Disney vibe. I really like the exaggeration of the face. I also just really like the scene here and it's cool seeing the Orca Komodo in the bottom there, poor thing just swimming away. It's a really awesome scene and I just have to mention the piercing red eyes and the scar going over the eye is just such an excellent touch and it really ties it together. And next up, we're glad to be chilling with an unnamed hybrid. I absolutely love just all the scale work on the body and a little bit around the great big sail. This creature has a gorgeous texture. And I just really love the overall proportions. Just, I know it's one of those running lizards. I do not know their names, but I just think it's a really cool concept, especially just with the great big giant sail on top. I think it's a really cool combination and it just looks very eye-catching and also quite cute. 
And next up, we got a piece by Ari Hell Now. The face is wonderfully creepy. I especially just like all these little frilly appendages coming off from around the mouth. In fact, the entire mouth shape is just fascinating. There really is a lot to take in here. There's lots of really cool little features, just your overall shape and size and dynamics and everything. And I also just like how whatever the frilly thing going on with the mouth is, I like how it's also there consistently among the rest of the creature, around the dorsal fins, on the back and the tail. It just has this whole mottled appearance and I think it looks very eye-catching. And next up by Vacuum Cleaner, we have the Thresher Shark and Basilisk Lizard. I really like the face and I also like how it's seemingly emerging out of the water and onto land. All the splashy textures add quite a bit of movement. And I also really like the shading in particular around the arms and around the tail frill. And coming up next, we have a whole collection of submissions by Physics. So the first one's a Lizark, which is a shark lizard combo that does exceptionally well underwater while struggling on land. It feeds some birds by jumping out of the water up to 30 feet in the air to catch its prey. For the Lizark, I especially like the jaw design you can see on the bottom right hand corner, and the footprint on the bottom left is quite an interesting choice. And next up is the Great White Tyranodon, which is a piscivore, and it's the only relative of a shark that's capable of becoming airborne. With a wingspan of 10 feet, it can easily swoop down and catch tuna, salmon, or other shallow fish with ease. It is also capable of diving once in water to a mile or more deep, as it can hold its breath for three or more hours. For physics third submission, we've got the Sarcosuchodon, which is an aquatic member of the Crocodilian family. This species in particular was a prehistoric giant, females growing up to 30 feet long. It is believed that this is a cross species of a shark and the swamp king at the time, the Sarcosuchus. Next, we have the Great White Dragon, which is the only dragon of its kind but appears not to age. It wears a gem of the sea on its scarred neck as proof of its power. It has many battle scars and wounds, yet sets the bloodlust in its eyes and two sets of teeth. Beware. Gotta say, I'm loving how battle what it looks, all the various scars and bite marks is really quite interesting. Next up, we've got the Spino Sharkus, also named Fish, with a wonderful texture going down its body and a rather interesting looking dewlap. Following that is the Black Tip Gecko, a large and formidable looking creature with a lot of dorsal fins. Next is the Marine Bull Shark, which I have to say looks incredibly aerodynamic, reminds me of a Concorde. For Physics 8 submission is the Abracchio Sharkus, with what appears to be a cool looking bite mark on the upper tip of its tail. Ninth is a frilled dragon, which is a man-made cross between a Komodo dragon and a frilled shark. It lives on land, hunting down large mammals such as tigers, jaguars and deer. It cannot breathe underwater, however it will sometimes mimic the mating call of medium sharks, such as hammerheads and tiger sharks, to lure them to the shore to be eaten. Absolutely loving all the appendages on this one, and also the change in pencil technique to show the different texture of them. And for physics, 10th and final submission is the Ankylosaurus and Megalodon hybrids, with a really creepy looking xenomorph double jaw and a wonderful texture of ostrogens on its back. All in all, a really great collection of various concept designs. And next up we have Alice Bill with his lone shark, which is... Oh dear, there's just so many things to say about this. And to be fair though, I do absolutely love the design itself. I really like the leopard gecko texture on this one. I also love its suits and the little shark pin on its tuxedo. The little summer shorts as well, an adorable touch. And the bat is a rather interesting contrast. As always, a wonderful concept from Ale. And next up by Draconic Kitsune, we have SCP-682-A. It appears to be a variant of 682 adapted to a more aquatic environment with several shark-like features. While it is somewhat slower and sluggish on land, 682A makes up for it in water, where it is capable of outswimming a torpedo. It shares 682's disdain for life and will tear apart anything within reach. It has even been observed to putting its victims into water's body and ripping them apart beneath the surface, a method of killing it seems to refer. Very creepy, and as I said before, it actually did surprise me if not seen 682 already, so this is very fitting. And I must mention that the overall red lighting, and in particular the use of the red outline, is a very striking touch. Really adds to the overall creepiness of this, which I think is very fitting for SCP. Not to mention the overall dark colour palette really fits the description of what I imagine to be a dark and eerie hunter. And following Kitsune, we have Draculady with a Spinosaurus shark hybrid. I really like how this seems to be just mid-motion. You can really see how it's mid-dive but turning around, as you can tell by the flow of the bubbles, which look fantastic, and the shimmering lights on the back. The overall idea as well, Spinosaurus and Shark is really awesome. I absolutely love how Draki is actually strayed away from the great big sail and instead converted it into this combination of various Godzilla-like dorsal fins from the shark. It's a really cool combination and definitely stepping out of the comfort zone for what you'd recognize as a Spinosaurus. Saying that, I also just love all the subtle scales and texture on the body, or little bits of osteoderm and spots as well and also the darker color scheme and the white belly really fitting that of a great white shark and the face as well and the piercing orange eyes the entire thing just looks absolutely visually stunning next up we got another by abyss arachnus of the gliding death which is a edestus and gliding lizard this is one absolutely crazy looking sketch and i just love how it seems to be just in an environment with all these other creatures because it just adds so much more to the concept and with the name gliding death you can really see what it appears to be it's mid hunting or mid attack it just looks very much mid action it just gives it so much more life and depth 
I especially just love the texture on his tail in particular. The two sets of fins and sails really coming out of it and just looking very spiky. The face as well has got a gorgeous texture and some very creepy looking teeth. And I just love all the various sketching techniques. It's really fitting for the name. And next up we have Sami with the Sleeper Shark, Common Garden Skink and Legless Lizard. Time is not something that concerns the sleeper. As they drift slowly through the crystal clear waters of the long derelict oceans, its numerous scars tell a silent story of centuries past faded away in quiet oblivion. It has witnessed empires rise and fall, only learning by sharp spearheads and unkind snares, ever so often piercing the inky darkness with their flashes of metallic gleam, to then be dissolved by time's march forward. All while the sleeper continues to aimlessly follow the gentle currents of the dark world, waiting. Dude, that's eerie. What is it waiting for? I, I love the idea, I love the concept. And I think it really makes sense for this creature to be so battle-worn, and I think it comes across very nicely in the illustration as well. All I can think is, what is it waiting for? And how long has it been waiting for? Following Somi is the Void Box with two different hybrids for their submission. The top one is the Chlamydiosaurus Anguinus, which is a frilled shark and frilled lizard. And on the bottom is the Geliocurdo Komodo Duensis, which is a tiger shark and Komodo dragon. Those names are very hard to pronounce, so I apologize if I butchered them. But the two concepts just look awesome. I really like the shading technique, especially around all the orange frills of the upper concept. In fact, I feel like this duo concept here is a really great illustration of just how varied, you know, the hybrids can be. Because the upper one just looks very clearly like an aquatic creature with a lot of um, lizard appendages. Whereas the bottom one looks like a very big terrestrial creature with a lot of shark features. And I think it's just a really great way of just showing how much of a contrast these can be, how much of a diversity the ideas can have. Both in terms of colour palettes and features, not to mention body shape and biome. And I feel like The Void has just done a fantastic job of displaying both ideas very well. And next up we've got Orloki with the Goblin Agamid, which is a goblin shark and horned tree Agamid, a shark that's hidden in the shadows since ancient times. While it may look to be covered in scales, this beast's keratinous skin far closer resembles that of a pangolin's. Due to the decay of keratin over time, fossil records of them do not often exemplify how incredibly armoured they truly are. They are elusive creatures preferring to stick to uncharted underwater cave systems, where they may rule their aquatic domain from prying eyes. So that's really quite fascinating then, I have to wonder, is this illustration then of like a live specimen? Or is it an idea of what it looks based on the eroded fossils? It's, the description is really interesting, it really is quite thought provoking. But what I will say though is that the overall concept itself, just the way it's illustrated, looks absolutely beautiful, looks very eerie, and it does look very ancient. So I think Logan's done a fantastic job of creating a living fossil kind of idea. The color palette is beautiful, and I really like the honeycomb design of all the pangolin scales, if you will. Not sure on the correct term here. And its face really does signify just that of a very ancient abyssal creature. It's beautiful, it's fascinating, and I'm really curious to know if this is a image of a live specimen or an idea interpreted based on how the fossils look like. Next up, we've got Habla P. Tiburon with a hybrid of a goblin shark and a Spinosaurus. They have all kinds of ease and they have retractable claws. It hides them when swimming and takes them out when hunting. It has dorsal spines that allow it to swim better and, and also uses them to intimidate rivals. And they have named the hybrid Oroscope. I love the idea of retractable claws and I can imagine using that not only for wall climbing, but I can also imagine it perhaps burrowing in the deep ocean or perhaps digging away at some coral to get to its prey. And with big powerful legs like that, I can imagine doing a very effective job at digging away. The overall design looks really cool and I especially just love the frill, if you will, around the neck of the dewlap and also around the back of the head. And those great big menacing teeth, again, just look great for snapping things up. And next up, by Elephant Dog, we have the Gobillion. That is a goblin shark chameleon hybrid. This creature lives in swamp like areas and is a cannibal. It can swim, but since it doesn't have gills, it can't go far. It prefers to hang high above the ground in trees. It's about two feet long and its tongue can reach about one meter at max. If it's lucky, a frog or some sort of reptile will wander around in the ground beneath the spot it hangs. When the animal gets close, it turns to shades of red and yellows to momentarily blinding its prey. Instead of shooting the tongue from its mouth or expanding its jaws from the mouth, Alpha Dog thought it'd be cool to shoot it off the jaws from the tip of the tongue. And it'll also make you bleed out fast, so if it bites you, you don't stand a chance. That is very gruesome. Very cool concept though, to have the jaws on the tongue itself is... <laughs> Very, very creepy, but very interesting and quite unique. And just the idea of having this one semi-aquatic creature with a shark hybrid within it to catch unsuspecting prey is a very neat idea. And there's such a stark contrast from what you'd expect of a shark hybrid. And following Alpha, we have Caliber Light with the Cartridontosaurus and Cretoctorina. Meet Typerunosaurus, it means shark lizard, and I'll name it John because John. <laughs> I love John. John looks amazing. And I'm also very grateful because the previous two names are very hard to pronounce. I love how it's got like an overall very raptor-ish appearance. I probably think that because of the large head and very large eyes. But the fact that it's dripping saliva with those large eyes is really intimidating. 
I also just love all the various textures on the body, all the big frills, the big layers of armor, and especially the design of the dorsal fin, the fins on the arms and the tail. I can't help but imagine it's being some sort of sea raptor, and the idea of that, just something kind of small, just swimming around very rapidly, being very energetic and therefore very fast and agile. It's an adorable concept, but again, the dripping jaws <laughs> and the great big teeth really make me think, hmm, actually I'll take a bit of a step back if I, if I were to ever see one. The concept is great, and I just love the varied impressions that this can invoke. Next up we got Wave Speed with a red-headed frilled Mako Shark. The miniatures work in progress, and I think so far looks absolutely wonderful. I especially just love the stark red head compared to the blue colour scheme. It makes a really cool and rather intimidating contrast. I also just really love the way the teeth are illustrated. They look wonderfully complex, and I can't wait to see them in more detail. And assuming you're going to have the same kind of shading as your eye, then I'm very excited for that. Eye is absolutely beautiful. And for an early work in progress, Wave Speed, I think this looks absolutely wonderful and I cannot wait to see what you do with it. And also I've spotted the easter egg in the neck and I think it's a wonderful touch. Next up we've got a poop head to 27 with their bonnet head and Komodo shark hybrid. There's something about the way this creature just had its paw flicking out. It makes me imagine a juvenile kind of like scampering along and it's just a really adorable concept until I see the face and the teeth. The teeth are <laughs> very, very scary but I just I just love it. It looks very cute. I think it's because of the big black eyes. Perhaps it just instills like a full set of cute. Either way I think it's an absolutely wonderful hybrid idea and I especially love the illustration on the left of it licking out towards what I think might be a leaf. And next up by Viking Leo, we have another work in progress piece. An absolutely stunning progress so far. I just love all the various different layers of colour and shading. There's so much depth and gradient, as well as highlights and lowlights, that it really brings together a very rich looking colour scheme. And I especially love the texture around the pit in the eye, around the back of the head, a bit around the snout and also the gums. The needle-like teeth also just match the concept wonderfully. And next up by Taco 12WT3, it's a juvenile blue-tailed western skink. I really like the varying colour patterns on this one. How it's got a nice dark head, a very bright stripy body, and then a wonderfully blue tail. I especially like the shading done around the yellow and just how brightly it pops out. And I also like the little spiky fins. And next up by Ghost Nico, we have Banana Splits the Sea Devil, which is a thorny devil, five-banded gliding lizard, chain cat shark, and a hint of Rathalos. With species name, Draco Horridus. I really like the markings on this. I don't know what I would actually call the markings, but how just like a bit of webbed texture kind of webbed around the entire creature and how it looks very stretched in a way that it's holes in the patterning. It looks really cool. I also just really like just all the spiky texture all over this creature. It sells Rathalos very effectively. And also there's large powerful wings, complemented by the leg wings as well. And I think the color palette is a very effective choice. And for last, but absolutely not least, by 404, named not found, we have a suit concept based on the shark and lizard, which is intended to maximize mobility and stealth. The shark portion of the design is apparent as visual design and is equipped with shark-like fins, as well as a helmet that mimics the look of a shark's head, whereas the lizard portion is expressed in the wearer having four limbs, as well as through a heat insulation circulation system that is capable of matching the suit's thermal signature to that of its surroundings. My god, what a fascinating concept. I really do like Furrow Ford's interpretation of the prompt and just how they come out with these very creative and unique ideas. The design of the suit itself just looks absolutely fantastic. I especially just love all the different layers, particularly around the thighs, the shins, and around the arms and chest. I can definitely see the shark resemblance in the helmet as well, but I also like how it actually matches the contours of the, of the person's face, as opposed to it being, you know, like a literal shark helmet. The colour palette is a really nice touch, and the concept of having a heat insulation and circulation system for what is what appears to be a diving suit is very creative and also quite futuresque. And I have to say, the more I'm seeing 404 submissions, the more I'm wondering, are they secretly a Subnautica concept artist? Because a lot of these really would fit in Subnautica fantastically. Not to mention just how creative and quite professional their illustrations look. Really mate, well done. And that is the final Shark and Lizard submission. I gotta say I'm a bit relieved because that's been over 150 submissions, by far more than we've had anywhere else, and absolutely incredible just everything of submissions, library, collection, variety, quality, quantity, my goodness. Thank you all so so much, it's been an incredible journey going through that one, and as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a bonus round as we are currently already on prompt number 10 which is a monster hunter or kaiju paired with your favourite animal for the big finale of the final prompt. If you want to get involved in that one, you can submit either by my Discord server, you can email me directly, you can reply in the comment section down below, or you can message me on DefiantArch or Twitter, and you can get involved for the final prompt. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing what you have in store. Have a wonderful day, and take care. Cheers.